everybody. Today I'm going to introduce you to the fun world of Kydex and show you all the projects you can make with it. And we're going to make a knife sheath for this guy. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Vital Point guys. This is your host Andrew Penzi. Today we are playing with Kydex. I've been having a lot of fun with this material lately. I recently made this machete sheath. Came out really good. I'm really happy with it. Uh, the great thing about this material, the knives sort of lock in there and then they don't go anywhere. It holds them real secure and, uh, and it's easy to do yourself. So typically Kydex is sold in square foot sheets. You can buy them online. They are semi-rigid when they're cool, but when you heat them up in the oven, they get nice and soft and moldable. And you can mold it around all sorts of things. Typically people use them for knife sheaths and gun holsters, but there's a lot of other things that you might think of that would come in handy for as well. So there are a couple items you need to get started here. The first is you need a mold, something that when that kydex is hot, that you can press, that it'll conform to whatever object you're, you're melting it around. So the, what I use for that is right here. I made it for absolutely nothing. I had a couple pieces of three quarter inch plywood. You just need some sort of rigid wood or backer. And then I used a couple pieces of foam in the middle. And the foam just happened to be laying in one of the parking spots I usually hunt in. And it was just there one day. I'm like, hey, that'll come in handy. Uh, and this is something from like a kitchen mat that you would have at your sink, you know, to make it more comfortable to stand on. But it works really well. You can see how when you squeeze it, it compresses. It'll re work real well to form around whatever object you're trying to mold. The next thing you need is some way to hold that kydex together. Once you mold it around your object, you have to secure it somehow. So for this uh, piece here, I use some grommets that you see here and also some screws to hold on the uh, belt holster. Now grommets look really sharp. I recommend them. Um, they're easy to press on and they just look good. But in order to use these, you have to get one of these guys. Uh, now this is a little grommet eye flaring tool and I got this from knifekits.com. In fact, I got a lot of these supplies from knifekits.com. You could also get them on Amazon. And this is the most expensive item of the group. Uh, this was about 30 bucks, but once you have this, you could use it for all sorts of creative projects. Now to attach something like this, one piece of kydex to another, I first put in the grommets, but then you need something to hold the two pieces together. So for that, you use something like this. And also knifekits.com sells all this stuff. And this is a post with a little screw and they just pair into each other there. There we go. And that holds it securely. And I put a little bit of epoxy in there so it doesn't come out. Now, if you didn't want to spend the money on that flaring tool, you might be able to get away with just using the post and screws instead of the eyelets. But what most people do is they put the eyelets in first and then use the post and screw to attach the whole assembly together. An important thing to note is there are two main sizes of all this stuff. The eyelets, the posts, the screws, um, the flaring tool, number six or number eight. Essentially number eight is about a quarter inch size and you can see the differences there. This is the uh, number eight one. And then there's also number six which I think is three sixteenths of an inch. Now most people use the quarter inch size because it is easier to thread paracord through there and there are a lot of other screw options to work with the quarter inch size. Three sixteenth, you're a lot more limited in what you could use with that. But I do like the smaller size, I'll tell you why. Here is the quarter inch size but you can see how much room it takes. If I take the knife out and compare it to the sheath, the sheath is much wider because of that extra room that you need. You need a little space on each side of the grommet. So the smaller size would just be a lot more compact for a small knife or something like that. I think the small size is kind of nice. So when you order your items, you have to order them all the same size to, for consistency. If you're getting the number eight grommet, you have to get the number eight flaring tool and then you have to get the number eight screws. I didn't know that at first and it was a little confusing trying to figure out what items I need. Fortunately, this stuff is pretty cheap. Uh, it's only like a buck or so for a bag of 10 grommets. So that's no big deal. But for the flaring tool, that's something to consider. The Kydex comes in two main thicknesses that most people use. There is 0.06 and 0.08. Uh, these are 0.08. I think 
0.08 is a little more rigid for a gun holster knife sheath. Maybe for a small knife, you might be able to get away with the 0.06, but most people use the 0.08. All right, let's get started. We are gonna make a Kydex sheath for this little hunting knife I have. Of course, the sheath this thing came with was really just horrible. You can see what a bad design it was that as you insert the knife, the knife actually cuts the threads that hold the sheath together. It's kind of funny uh, that someone would design it that way. So little by little, the knife started poking out the tip and I was like getting poked in the leg with my knife. That's not a good thing. We want to make this thing more secure and Kydex is the way to go. So as I said, Kydex is going to mold around this knife. The problem with this knife is it has this gut hook in here. So if you mold the Kydex around and it presses in there, you won't be able to get the knife in because this little piece is going to be indented. So for stuff like that, you have to fill it in. And I just got a little piece of wood here and I'm going to shove that right in the middle there. You can see I just made it to fit. I just sanded a little piece of uh, cedar wood I had lying around. And uh, just to kind of seal that up so that way it'll make it easy to insert the knife into the Kydex. The next thing you want to do is coat the entire knife blade with some blue masking tape, about two or three layers, because that'll make it a little bit easier for the knife blade to slide in the sheath when you're all done. The little wrinkles will not show up in the 0.80 kydex, so don't worry too much about them. When you do this, you can either bend the kydex around the knife so that your rivets are just on one side, or you could do two pieces together like a sandwich, but then you need rivets on both sides of the knife. And for me, I want to keep the knife sheath as thin as possible so that it doesn't clang against things uh, while it's on my waist. So I'm going to bend it around the back of the knife and just put the rivets on one side. Give yourself extra kydex on the ends to work with and figure out about how much you need. And you just score it with the knife and then it'll snap off. Make sure you have your mold all ready to go and throw that Kydex in a 350 degree oven for about three minutes. I recommend wearing some gloves for this so that you don't burn your fingertips off. Put the kitchen fan on because this could get a little stinky. Okay, here it goes. I gotta work kind of quickly here. Let's see if it looks ready. Yeah, it looks pretty soft. Make sure you push the back of the knife really down into the middle of this thing. Hold it over. Put it in your press. Get this clamped as quickly as possible. It's been about five minutes and I should probably wait a little longer, but this is like opening a Christmas present. I just can't wait. So let's see what we got. See if the mold took uh, shape. Da, da, da. Yeah, it got good definition. It really uh, hugged that knife nicely. Actually, it got great definition. So it looks pretty good. I think we're good to go. Now all that we have to do is put in some grommets along the edge and trim this. Uh, now, you want to leave at least an eighth of an inch, if not a little more, between the edge of the blade and the edge of the grommet because it'll just get a little too tight otherwise. And then the tricky thing is figuring out where to cut this. I'll refer to this knife for a second. You want to cut it so that the knife is able to slide in and then snap. See that? that snap, that's what sort of locks it in place so that it doesn't fall out. So see, right here is where this one locks. It uh, grabs onto this little loop on the edge here, and that holds it. So if I cut it too much more past that, chances are the knife would slide out. So that's what we gotta look for. Where's the best spot here to cut it? And I always tend to cut a little less and then just trim off a little at a time, a little at a time until I get to that sweet spot. But I'm guessing that right here, this big knob here is going to be that sweet spot. Um, so I'll probably come in somewhere around the edge here and hook into that knob somewhere. Now you see why I put that little piece of wood on the back side. If there was no wood there and this indented there, I wouldn't be able to get the blade past that part. I traced with a pencil the edge of the blade just so I had an idea where that is. And I'm going to go ahead and use the quarter inch grommets along here. I decided I'm going to put four holes in. I'm going to put two grommets down on the end here. And then on these last two holes, I'm not even going to put grommets, I don't think. I'm going to use these little posts and screws because I am going to attach a belt loop to this. And I'll show you how to do that. 
I'll start by drilling a hole at each end, and then the other two I'll just space evenly in the middle. For now I'm going to do a rough cut just about an inch away just to be able to get these grommets in and then I'll shape it further later. Cutting this stuff is kind of tricky so I like using a jigsaw with a real fine tooth blade uh, that you'd use for metal. Seems to work pretty well. You have to hold this really securely down. It melted itself back together. That's pretty funny. Figure out which side of the sheath is going to be on the outside and you put the nice end of the grommet on the outside. Then put this in our flaring die jig and you give it a couple shots with the hammer to curve the top edge around. I'm going to put the post for the two screws I'm going to insert and then that way I could uh, trace a line as to where I want to cut this. At this point I'm going to pull the knife out of here so that I could trim off the handle. And I want to note where that indentation is that it's going to hook onto. And I'm going to come a little ways past that indentation. And like I said, you could always take more off after. So you trim a little bit and try it out and see how it fits. That's not too bad, it snaps in there pretty good, but you can see how much this opens up and this is going to be pinched closed, so i got to trim quite a bit more off. As you start getting closer, you could use a belt sander with some rough paper on there. Uh, it helps the shaping a little bit easier, but it does make a mess. This came out pretty nice, I got it about where I want it. It snaps in pretty nicely. See, it holds the knife good and secure, um, and I could be done right there, but I'm going to make a couple improvements to this. One is I left a little extra tab of material on the end here, and I'm going to heat this up with a heat gun and try to bend it over. That will, that will give me a little thumb press to make it easy to kind of push this off with my thumb without having to fight to get it off my belt. Now another improvement I'm going to make here is I'm going to add a belt loop. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get a second piece of Kydex, a thin piece like this, heat it up the same way we did before. I'm going to put it in the press over my knife like so. Make sure it covers the first two uh, screws here because you're going to screw it. Use these same two screws to hold the second piece on. I'm going to put it over the second piece. I have a piece of wood here that I cut out the size of my belt, so one and three quarters of an inch, a little bit bigger than your belt. You're going to lay this over the top, bend this over, and then when you press it down in your mold, you'll have the shape of this for your belt loop. Something else I'm going to do before you press it in your mold is get a thin piece of metal like this and just slide it in between. You make a sandwich. That way this piece of kydex doesn't wrap around your handle. It'll stay flat where it needs to for the belt loop. You flip the belt over, press it down, and you'll have your belt loop ready to go. Just like I did here. See, I put a piece of metal underneath to keep this part flat. Put the piece of wood right in the middle there. It's going to be a little tight, but you get the idea. Flip it over and then you screw it to the existing screw holes. Shape this as you need. I glued a couple pieces of foam to the back of this piece of metal and that'll just act as a guide so that when I put the belt loop on there I'll know it's generally perpendicular to the knife. Kydex is going in the oven for three minutes. Put your knife in the freezer for about an hour or so before pressing your belt loop onto the knife sheath. That way you won't remelt your knife sheath. Nice and soft. I'm going to wrap it around my belt loop. Put it approximately into position. Not easy to film when your neighbor's cranking soft rock all day long, but you got to do what you got to do. Hey, this came out great. Um, I took it out of the mold this morning and you can see the belt loop came out really sharp there. Uh, so I've just been playing around with uh, tracing out the uh, layout that I want. I'm only going to connect the first two holes so all the rest will be trimmed off. Um, and you can put Sharpie on here and the Sharpie actually will come right off with denatured alcohol unless you reheat it again. If you screw up on this thing, uh, that's a great thing about Kydex, just throw it back in the oven and start over, no big deal. But once the Sharpie's on there, if you put it back in the oven, it gets baked in there and then it's there for life. So I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming out some shapes and we'll see this thing come together. 
Okay, got it just about where I want it here, to the shape I want. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish all these edges with a buffing wheel. And so first I'm gonna do the ones that I can't really get to after it's attached. I'll do all this side here. And this side I will do after it's attached. I'll do the two edges together. It's looking really good. The last thing I'm gonna do before final assembly is actually the scariest. I'm gonna to try to heat up this little tab with a heat gun and be able to bend it over so that'll be my little thumb hole to pull the knife out easier. But I don't wanna screw up the rest of this sheath because it came out so good. So I might cover it up with tin foil and just heat up this tip with one of these heat guns. Got my space shuttle heat shield here. Hopefully this will work. That worked fantastic, it's exactly what I wanted. I'll just polish it up after. Right now, let's assemble this puppy. Our final assembly, I mixed up some two-part epoxy. I'm gonna put the epoxy in each post and then put it all together, nice and tight. Time to smooth off this edge and then we're all set. All right, there you go guys, another knife sheath done. Ready to go, really happy with the way it came out. I suggest you guys get some Kydex, start playing around, all sorts of things you can make with it. Until next time, this is your host Andrew Penzi. Catch you later guys.